Active management is pretty critical to maintain the health and resiliency of the forest. When you think about invasive pests, climate change, any other pressures that we have on our forest, forests can become so degraded that they can't recover, they can't become forests anymore. A large part of TNC's work is to make sure that these forests continue to function. Across the Appalachians, we are working with partners to develop these dynamic forest restoration blocks. We are able to pool our resources together to manage on a scale that none of us could do on our own. We're thinking of a landscape as 10,000 acres, a like pretty large block. So we want to have some portion of that maintained as early successional, some as mixed successional, and some as late successional. There's not a lot of late successional forests that we have across the landscape, especially in Pennsylvania. And so providing more of that forest type will give a type of habitat complexity that's really missing. What we want to see in a healthy forest is a healthy canopy layer that's pretty diverse. So here we have some oaks, we have some maples, we have these conifers. A lot of the conifers that we're trying to promote here are pretty important for cold water streams. They do a pretty irreplaceable job of shading streams and keeping temperatures of the streams at a moderated level throughout the summer especially. Behind us we have a pocket of red spruce. So red spruce was restricted to about 10% of its native range. And so we're gonna try and take this opportunity here in this stand to help advance it into the canopy. Having a diversity of forest types means that any disturbance that comes along, whether it's one of those or a natural disturbance, um, the forest can recover and regrow. Controlled burns will improve wildlife habitat for really important species like the golden wing warbler, our whippoorwills, or we see many fire dependent plants that come back after a burn. Before the fire, this trillium will have been growing underneath all this huckleberry or low bush blueberry and wouldn't have had enough sun, but now, with the fire, it's been able to sprout back and it has space to grow. When we do controlled burns, they only happen under a very strict set of parameters. We look at a lot of different weather conditions, such as temperature, relative humidity, wind speed and direction. Okay, nine o'clock weather. Uh, winds were averaging two to five out of the northwest and a gust to seven. It's really neat how this was burned just a month ago and we can already see the new vegetation coming back. When people think about fires, it's these big forest replacing ones that you see in the news out west, but in a healthy ecosystem, the flames stay pretty low, just a few feet high, and just kind of creeps through here, burns pretty slowly. The Nature Conservancy is a leader in controlled burning. On thousands of acres across the country, we are using good fire to improve wildlife habitat and forest resilience. Our goal is to not only create the habitat for those species, but then also create opportunities for people to come out and visit. Here in Long Pond, we're only about two hours from New York City and Philadelphia. So this is a really good opportunity for many people to come on a weekend trip or part of their summer vacation to see kind of this big woods of Pennsylvania. Right now, we are on Kathy's Trail of the Hauser Nature Center. It is what we refer to as a universal access trail. The idea is to make a place still embedded in nature that has the full functionality and accessibility for anybody that would like to attend. We actually have a great area for avian migration. If you come out here, you will see everything from chickadees to warblers to sparrows. 
It's a great opportunity to show off the work in the habitat restoration projects that we're doing, especially when you see those results in action. It's important for the Nature Conservancy and other conservation organizations to invest in land management. We need to make sure that these rare ecosystems can provide the biodiversity and unique habitats that we know that they can. In our land management, we need to make sure that those wildlife species are there for today's generations and future generations as well. We're really hoping that community members get a sense of ownership when they come out here and realize that this was made for you by you.